Hello and welcome to another Tech Talk brought to you by the Albert Lee Public Library. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about Flickr. So if you're not that familiar with Flickr, um, I'll kind of go through the basics of it, what you need to know. And also, if you've ever looked at any of our event photos, we use Flickr as a public library as a way to share event photos um, with the public so you have access to photos um, if you wish. So Flickr is essentially a photo sharing platform and it's considered a social network like Facebook, like Twitter, like, like Instagram, um, but it's strictly based on photos. So it's a little bit, um, if you watch our tech talk or you're at all familiar with Instagram, Instagram is based on photos. Um, but there's a few other components of it. Flickr is strictly photos and what they kind of consider more professional photography sharing. Everyday users can use it for sure. Um, but the ones that get the most out of it are people that are sharing their professional photos. Um, but the reason that I'm talking about it today is because it's a great way to upload a batch of photos and send out a link so that family members and friends can see photos. Um, and so it's free to use. There is an upgrade option which I'll talk about um, a little bit later on, but just setting up a regular account is free. And as I said earlier, it's a really easy way to upload and share photos with others. Um, and I'll get into the privacy settings in a little bit to talk about what you might want to be careful about if you're uploading photos on Flickr. Um, but for instance, if you want to share some photos with other people, if you share it on Facebook, you have to be friends with them. If you share it, um, and they have to have a Facebook account. If you share it on Instagram, they have to have an Instagram account to see it. So there's these different stipulations um, that happen. Whereas with Flickr, if you are comfortable sharing your photos, in public, um, you know, the public will see them. Someone might be able to search and stumble upon them, but they're, but you could set it up so it's public and then they wouldn't have to have a Flickr account. All they need is the URL of your um, Flickr photos and they'll be able to see everything. And so Flickr is owned by Yahoo. So if you have a Yahoo email address, you would use that to sign in. But anyone can create an account, so you can just create an account with any email address that you use. And then there is a Flickr app for Apple and Android devices. So if you only use a phone or a tablet, or you know people that only use phones or tablets, um, it's optimized on the app for that. So a free account gives you a thousand gigabytes of storage and access to their editing tools, so you could edit your photos. It a thousand gigabytes of storage is a lot of storage for photos, so just keep that in mind. That's a lot of storage for photos. You, you can upgrade to a pro account for a little bit more advanced stats, ad-free browsing, a few more other tools. Most people, everyday people, won't find it necessary. Um, if you're using Flickr for more professional reasons, you may want to upgrade, I think. Um, it's pretty reasonable, like $2 a month, something like that it comes out to. So if, any, if you're interested in some of the pro features, just know that it is pretty reasonable. Um, and, and so you can set it so your whole account or individual photo albums are um, set so that only friends and family can see your photos. But if you limit it by that, then it requires that people that are looking at your photos have to have a Flickr account and you have to designate them. You can, you can set up friends on Flickr just like you can on Facebook. You can friend people, um, but you have to designate them as friends or family if you make your photos only friends or family. So it limits who can see it because it requires them to create an account. Again, free account, but you know some people aren't going to want to create an account. They just want to see photos. 
So if you leave it public, that people can see your photos on Flickr without an account. And when I go through some of the tips, um, I'll mention there's some ways, you know, a, a photo of your garden in your backyard, things like that, that people can't tie to you. Um, when you're uploading photos of family members, friends, you know, gatherings, that's where, you know, some people in the photos may not be comfortable with you putting it on Flickr where everyone can see it. If you don't use some of the features like tagging um, so that people can find it in the search engine, it's not as likely that someone's going to search for it and find it, but there is that possibility. So you have to weigh out the risks. Is the risk of someone getting this photo um, worth you know, having a free account and letting everyone see it? And are the people in the photo comfortable with me putting it on a public site where someone may happen to stumble upon it. So those are just some things to think about if you're thinking of posting um, photos of other people on Flickr. If you just want to post photos of, you know, objects, things like that, um, there's not as much harm in just posting them as public and sharing the link with people so they can see it. So just some of the features of Flickr, you've got a profile. So just like any social network, you're gonna have a profile, you can upload a profile picture, you can write a short bio. Again, if you're just using it to share with some family and friends, not a big deal. You probably don't need much information um, in the bio, but if you're gonna use it for an organizational purpose, such as what we do, which is to share event photos so people can see um, different uh, photos from, from different events, um, then you might wanna create a little bio. And this is where it, it becomes really valuable tool if you let people know that you're, you're taking pictures at events and that they're gonna be shared online, then you've kind of covered your bases and anyone who's uncomfortable with that can let you know and you can avoid photos with them in it. So for an organization, a nonprofit, um, things like that, it's a great way to share photos without requiring anyone to have an account. Let's say someone comes to an event, you tell them, you know, they're going to be available on Flickr afterwards. Here's our username. Go find them. Great. Then after the event, they can go and look at the photos that they want to see or people that missed the event for whatever reason could go look at the photos if they were interested in those. So after your profile, you've got your photo stream, which is where your photos that you've designated as public are. So these are all your photos that people can see. And then you can organize your photos into albums just to keep them better organized if you want to. So that's not a requirement. You don't have to organize them into albums, but it's recommended that you do, especially if you have a lot of photos. Um, and then groups, there's groups on Flickr, just like there's groups on Facebook, um, common interests, you know, things like that. So you could join groups. And then you can use their feature to friend people, um, add them to your profile kind of thing, so you're able to friend others. Um, so a few similarities to other social networks, but it's strictly uploading, sharing, commenting on looking at photos. Now, it can also be used as a photo backup. So in addition to the privacy settings where you can designate public private, um, and then, you know, public for friends or private, you know, for friends or family, you can also set it as totally private just for you. So if you want a way to up, back up some of your digital photos, if they're stored on your computer, you don't want your computer to crash, um, you could create a Flickr account and upload your photos to Flickr and set your privacy settings right away to private. So no one else would be able to see your photos, but you'd be able to go to any computer, you know, log into Flickr um, and get access to those photos and then you could download them back onto a different device. So it can be used as a backup photo storage or even just a photo storage if you're running out of um, storage space on some of your devices. And then if you wanted to share photos and you were at someone's house, you could log into your Flickr account and start showing them photos. So for that, it's really handy. Um, and then just some best practices. This is more for people that use it professionally if you want your photos to be searched and found. Um, so you can include a description with each photo. So if you want your photos to be found, discovered, 
definitely include a description. You can tag photos, so similar to tagging like people in pictures, you can tag a photo. So if the photo is of a really beautiful sunset, you can tag it sunset. Um, the more specific you are, the more likely it is that someone might find it if they're looking for a very specific photo. Um, if someone comments on your photo, it's good practice to, to comment on, to reply to the comment. Someone says, oh, very nice photo, you know, thank you. Um, that way it just kind of keeps that communication going and you're responsive so that if someone is looking more for professional reasons, they might be able to discover it and then it's a friendly, friendly conversation. And then if people are leaving comments on yours, it's nice to leave comments on other photos that you find that you like. If you're looking, let's say you're looking for photos of how to photograph trees so that you can go out and do some tree photo shoots, things like that. So that's kind of a brief overview of Flickr. Again, it's a photo sharing social network. They're very focused on photos, um, but just keep in mind that you can use it as a photo storage. If you set your um, privacy settings to private, it would be um, a photo storage system. So then you would log in and have all your access to your photos in case your computer crashed or you were at someone's house and you wanted to share photos with them but you didn't want to bring a USB drive, something like that. And um, it's good for organizations if you want to share photos publicly. It's also good for um, if you want to share photos with families and friends. Just keep in mind the tips that I gave you about sharing photos of people um, in case that becomes you know, an issue where that there's a privacy concern there. Um, but if you're sharing photos of, you know, the new yard that you did, you know, different things like that without people in them, or it's just going to be you in them and you're comfortable having that um, public photo online, then, then um, by all means, you can use it in that way. So um, this is the start of kind of our fall programming at Dalberly Public Library. So we're going to start doing Tech Talks every two weeks. So it's going to be the first Ideally, it'll work out to be about every two weeks, but it's the first and the third Wednesdays at 10 o'clock of every month. So if the Wednesdays, there's happen to be five Wednesdays in a month, then you'll just get two in that month, the first and the third week. And then we'll be back the next month on the first and the third. So we'll be back in two weeks on the third Wednesday of September um, for another Tech Talk.